Hi there, this is Anna from Anna Aspinus Designs. Happy Monday. I am back with a brand new video. And in this particular session, I want to combine the usual artsy inspiration that you would read on the blog at Anna Aspinus Designs, as well as some insights into the brand new art play collection. So first of all, I'm going to talk a little bit about the inspiration behind the collection. I'm not going to go and look at all of the products. I think that if you review the anatomy of an Anna release post, which I will post in this video below, then you'll get a good insight into what all of these products are intended for and how they're how I suggest that they can be used. So my main goal here is to pick out a few favorites and then I want to move along to some of the team layouts and then also show you a page that I was able to put together yesterday. So you can see on my screen we have the full collection and you'll notice recently that the collection has now increased in size from five products to six. And this is because I've now started including a bonus collection of products and it's usually just some add-on pieces from the collection. So in this case, there's an additional artsy paper, some additional word art. I created a photo blends to fit within the designs of the paper. There's a couple of extra transfers and and I believe there are three different notebook brushes included with this small bonus. So when you purchase the complete collection, then you automatically get this exclusive bonus as well. Just my way of saying thank you to all of the community members that support me on a weekly basis. So the inspiration behind this collection was really just to have some fun with the artistry. The colors also came naturally. I just came off a abstract painting weekend and I was really inspired about the concept of creativity. And then I came across this word axiom, which basically means a self-evident truth. And I thought that that was quite fitting for this collection. So I'm gonna head in and look at the favorite part of this collection, which are the artsy papers. I love these. And I've created them in this soft pastel color. I did have a request a little while ago for some pastel colors. I also really like the blues and yellows. I think that they work really well for all those summer pages with the sky and the water and perhaps some sunshine. And then I'm also thinking ahead to going back to school, this whole idea of creativity and making the magic happen is also a big part of what we do in school. And then I just love the lines in this collection. I think they work really well with architectural style photos. Um, so that would encompass travel. And some of these areas are a little sort of intimidating when it comes to blending your photos. So my next top pick in this collection are the Axiom Photo Blends. And I actually designed these to fit within those areas of the paper design so that you would be able to blend your photos quickly and easily. And so generally, the, the first ones are going to coordinate with the first paper. And as you progress, then the photo blends are going to fit with the later papers in the series. I love this really tiny one that I created for the, um, I believe it's the third paper. Let me just go and head back. So you can see here, um, I created this tiny little photo blends to fit in this area here, which is kind of fun, would be good for a little flower. Um, in my case, I used it to encompass a balloon, but just perhaps a small detail that you want to showcase in your designs. And then finally, I really like the notebook textures. These are a really great way to add some lines for your journaling, and they also add some interest to any white space in your designs. I love this one with the feathers in there. So you can see I've included a variety of different textures there. So if I head back, you can see the full collection. This is the art play palette. We've got a number of different elements. I wanted to bring in the colors of the papers and then also provide some elements that would coordinate for a variety of different purposes. So I really love the orange in this. I don't do too many kits in orange, but I think it's a really bright, cheery color and something different. And then of course you get the artsy template 
and you can see that there are three frames there so you just have to select your solid background change the title and add your photos add in your journaling and you've got a quick and easy page incidentally you can also use these layers independently in the template and coordinate them with the art play palette collection I also did some chipboard words which are super different for me usually I have wood words in a collection and I'll show you how I modified one of these words in order to add a monogram to my own layout and then we've looked at the bonus and then we also have this notebook collection of brushes which is pretty fun so I'm now going to move on and look at some of the layouts that were created for this collection and so I have a variety here that were created by the talented team at Anna Aspinus Designs and usually I pick three of these and I pick out a way in which you could use the supplies from Art Play Palette Axiom or whichever the new collection is to inspire you to create a page. In this case I thought I would walk you through that process instead of actually reading it and writing it on the blog then I can show you the ways that the team have used the supplies. So I thought that these three layouts were very interesting of course they all use the same background paper and they've all used the lines in the design in order to sort of lead the eye and set up the design for the page so in this way I, I love how the line in the background paper sort of frames and draws the eye to her subject and then this line that comes down through the page and sort of it leads the eye from the left hand side diagonally through to the right leads to this cluster of elements including text elements and I like how she's anchored the page by adding her elements in a different section so you have your focal point then you have this line that leads you down through to the right edge of the page where we have this really interesting cluster and then Viv has done the same with the school layout. So you can see that her colors coordinate with the color in the design. And she has sort of framed her picture in the same way. We've got these circles here. We've got these lines here. So it sort of bounces the eye back and forth, which leads the eye into the design. Arguably, you could also say that there's a visual triangle here which is also bringing the eye into the design. And then she's used the line in the paper to underline her title. And then again, she's got this cluster of elements which anchors the eye to the right-hand side of the page. So it's a really good example of that diagonal design which leads the eye from one side of the page to the other. And Mickey has followed a similar sort of design approach in that she has a cluster of elements also at the end of that line and notice how that mirrors the subject matter on both sides of the page and then you have my layout here which is slightly different but I decided to handle this one next purely because it uses the same paper but notice how I have placed my photo so I used the Axiom photo blends number two and I placed it on that line so a different way to use that line is sort of a ledge for my photo. And if we go into Photoshop, I can show you how this page was made up. So you can see that I started with the background paper and then I introduced the two photos. And if I go into this folder, you'll see that we have the Axiom Photo Blends. And in this case, I used the PSD file. So what this does is it allows me to access all of those layers individually. So we have the photo blends layer and then there are various textures around the photo blends which you can then recolor or turn off the visibility in order to suit your design. And you can see that I recolored this particular stain element here white instead of black as that worked better with the overall design. And then, of course, I blended this photo in the background. And you can see there's no mask here. I actually just took an eraser tool with an Anna Blends Artsy blending brush and literally just blended around the edges and applied a color burn blending mode to that layer. So that's just sort of a supporting photo. And then to my photo blends, I clipped my original photo 
Now, the photo that I was using, because of course it's July here, had a green background, and I decided I was going to change the color of that. You can only use this function in Photoshop, but I just want to show you quickly, if you go to Image Adjustments and then Selective Color, and then you select the overall color of that, so in this case it's sort of yellow, you can actually control the color of your photo and change the color in the background. So you can see we've got a green there. I changed that to more of an orangey hue because I wanted to bring it in line with the colors in my design. And then I duplicated that photo layer and added a screen blending mode at 37% and then duplicated it again. And to add some real punch, I applied a color burn blending mode at 52%. And then I brought in the multimedia balloons that were part of the Uplift and a release collection two weeks ago. And I just updated them. So simply, if I go ahead and turn off these papers, you can see I clipped artsy papers from the new Axiom collection to the balloon elements. And so I was able to customize them to make them work with my design. And then also to another little neat feature here is that I use the selection tool to select the chipboard E and uh, you can see there's a bit of an anomaly here. So I decided to just place that within the curve of the stitching so that it would hide any of that sort of um, mess that's on the left hand side of the E where this latter was attached to the other words. So I thought that was a pretty fun way to add in that small monogram touch. And then of course I added in my words. So I applied an outer glow to my title. This allows it to pop off the page a little bit. I added in the date and then I added in my journaling. And if we go back down to the bottom here, you can see that I added in one of those notebook brushes to provide lines for my script text. So quick deconstruct there. I was going to show you the other one that I shared in the Anna News, but I didn't actually receive any responses about any questions about that. So I thought I would show you this one instead and just show you how you're able to customize those balloons and use the lines in your design. So here you can see this line frames her face here. And then we've got the other lines that sort of lead the eye down. So again, we've got this diagonal action happening here that leads the eye from the left hand side to the right hand side of the page. So moving on, this was the one that I shared in the Anna News and same sort of scenario here. You can see how I have modified those balloons from the Uplift collection by changing the color of some of the elements using the hue and saturation tool and then clipping the Axiom papers to the balloons. And then I've used that really small, cute photo blends mask here to create another balloon. So it, it accentuates the detail of my focal photo. And I've also incorporated it into this balloon. And I also brought in some stitching from last, from the Uplift collection as well. And then I have my element cluster down the bottom here. And what this does is it serves to create a visual triangle. So instead of leading the eye from the left hand side of the page down to the right, my eye is now going in a circle. I was going to add my journaling here in the center, but I felt like it fitted better to the right hand side here. And I liked the white space. There's a lot going on in each one of these clusters in terms of color, in terms of value, that's the darks and the lights and the images, the embellishment. And so I just wanted to kind of keep this nice and free. So as the eye moves from these areas of interest, it's allowed to rest in that white space. Trish had a really neat approach. She decided to enlarge the word art and then she clipped a photo to the word art. So I thought that was a pretty neat way to use the designs. And then Viv used one of the notebook brushes to contain the photo clipped, one of, one of the Axiom photo blends. And notice how she's used the title here to bridge the two focal points on the page. And again, we've got this action of the eye starting from one side of the page and being led to the other side. This is where the beach theme uh, works really well. I love how Marnie has 
selected colors that coordinate with that bonus artsy paper in the bonus collection of supplies. I really like the colors. I like how she's used the stitching. Again, you've got the lines running over the top of the roofs here, which is a really nice support element. It sort of frames the image. And then the stitching mimics those same lines and draws the eye down to this secondary supporting photo. And then notice how she's clustered these elements together to create unity and to create groupings of elements. So we start with the artistry. We have the focal point, the lines draw the eye down to the supporting imagery. And then Viv has used that same paper. And I thought this was really interesting. I love how she's used the color in the paper to really bring out the the photo i think that these very sort of neutral style photos can be a bit dull and so you can really jazz them up with some of these sorts of designs and i love how the lines in here accentuate the lines in the architecture so notice how we have these these great lines in the architecture and how these are mimicked in the lines and the design. So I love that piece too. And of course she's used a photo blends to blend that into the background, making a really simple page. And then she's got the elements that come around the edge to sort of create a frame and draw the eye into the focal point. Because of the bright color here, she's had to provide some support in order to keep the eye onto the focal point. And then Margot, she actually rotated this paper. If you notice, she rotated it. It looks like uh, 90 degrees anti-clockwise and I love how you can do that. You can rotate the papers to give them a different look and then she's blended her photo in the top. So again, we've got that diagonal action happening, but in an opposing direction. So instead of going from left to right, we're going sort of from top to bottom or from top to bottom left. I like how she, again, has used the elements to create a visual triangle around the focal point of her image, therefore drawing the eye away from the color. So the color enhances as opposed to overwhelming the image. And then love this one by Christy. She's done a really great series of these abstracts by blending and moving the pieces of the last couple of collections together to create these designs. So just a, another fun way that you can either create, create some abstract art for your own enjoyment or perhaps to print for your wall. You can also use these abstract art pieces as foundations for your designs. Margot also created this page here using the template and I like how she's got the orange of the sun and the drinks and how that brings in the orange of the paper here. So just a, a fun way to document a moment on a trip. And Joan has done something very similar with the template as well. She's blended her photo into the area and then she's added in some supporting images. And I love how she's tucked the elements around the photos to support them and create a frame. And again, notice too how she's used the stitching to align with the designs on the background. So there's a lot of alignment happening here, a lot of curves, organic curves, which can mimic the artistry. So in the case of the uh, architecture here we've got the lines that mimic those but then we also have the support of additional elements which can support the lines in the background so the curve of the stitching and I love how she's placed this chipboard artwork over the black part of the background it really makes it stand out and punch and again notice the alignment of the line here where it curves around the flower image I like how this circle comes at the top here. It's almost like a sun and clouds in the background. So there's a lot of inspiration there, probably covered more than I would be able to do in a blog post. Hope you enjoyed the video. Please feel free to leave me some feedback. It's always good to hear from you so that I can figure out how best to serve the community and to share this inspiration with you. And of course, if you have any questions, then please send me an email to Anna at AnnaAspinusDesigns.com. I'll place that down below this video along with the anatomy of an Anna release video and then check back to some of the previous videos too and have a great week creating and I will be back in the space again soon. Take care. Bye-bye.